Hi there, Lily Eggers here with Rooted Relationships. And today I'm gonna to talk about what, how to handle your high maintenance partner. Um, I have some tools and tricks and paradigm shifts, reframes, um, and hopefully they will support you and your team. All right, let's get started. So the thing about high maintenance people is that, and this is gonna blow your mind, um, everyone is high maintenance. Mm -hmm. You too. It may look different, but everybody has things that are challenging to be with. Your partners know them. You may not. You may not know them about yourself, but I guarantee that your partners know that there are things about you that are annoying, that are challenging, that are difficult, that are not ideal. If they were given a, a, uh, a buffet, they would, not pick and they would not pick certain traits that you definitely have. So first of all, the first key is understanding that you have stuff too, and that your partner is figuring out how to work with your various non-ideal characteristics, and it's your job to figure out how to work with your partners. So this is what I'm gonna to speak to. It's my three A's. The first A is accept. Accept it. You can spend your time freaking out, worrying, looping around how you wish this was different, you want it to go away, or you can accept it. Now, I would say probably in the range of 70 to 80% of annoyances should fall into this category. Maybe that's a little bit intense. Let's say 50%. 50% should be accepted because it's part of the deal. Dan Savage, who is a wonderful relationship uh, and sex advice columnist, um, he calls it the price of admission. It's what you pay to be in relationship with this wonderful person. You get a lot of good stuff and there's a give and take. There's a quid pro quo here, you gotta pay for it. You learn to accept them so that you don't suffer and so that it, they, it doesn't get in the way of the positive nourishing aspects of your relationship. So number one, accept. Number two is adapt. And adaptation is different than acceptance, which is like, there's nothing I can do about this. I'm just gonna let it go. Adapt is how do I work with myself so that it doesn't bother me as much? Or how do I, how do I reorganize myself? How do I meet this issue? How do I meet this challenge in such a way that it feels better to me? Um, that it doesn't feel so annoying or frustrating or whatever it has been doing. Accepting is just like, it's never gonna change, let it go. Adapting is starting to involve yourself, starting to reframe, starting to do what you can to sort of ease it or work with it. There's tons of different techniques around how to adapt, how to better adapt, get some coaching or therapy around this, they can help. And finally, and this is the one that you do the least amount, but generally people do this the most amount, not always, it depends on their um, attachment style and personality profile, but is ask. This is when you make a request. Now, if you do this too much, then there's no differentiation of valuing. So pretty soon your partner is just feeling like, oh, so many needs, there's, I'm not doing anything right, I'm driving him crazy in this way, in this way, this way, I'm driving her nuts in this way, this way, this way and it's exhausting and they don't, and pretty soon they, they tend to get overwhelmed and withdraw and then give in because it's too many. So you have to be extremely selective. What is the most important issue here? And how can I bring this? Because I've done all this other work, figuring out how to accept and adapt to things, but I, this one I really need to ask about. This one I have a request. I need to name it, I need to share how it impacts me, and I really am gonna bring this as I've already tried to accept it, I've tried to adapt to it, and now I need your help, and we need to work on this together. This is a team, this is a team issue, but it's high value. This is not something that you're just throwing out day in, day out. Um, there's another kind of person who doesn't ever ask, and then they tend to grow clammed up with lots of resentments. And I'm, that, is not, that is not a good solution either. 
it is very important that you track, and I have a whole other video on resentment clearing, but you track what is building and growing inside of you so that it doesn't build up and create disconnection and uh, scar tissue basically um, in your relationship. All right, please feel free to comment. Please feel free to DM me with any questions. Um, and I look forward to seeing you back on here. Sign up for my, uh, for my channel. All right. Thanks everybody. Take care.